bill. It is good news right. for Republicans. It's Casey still to get to. It was the yeah. celebration uh, they've been waiting for. Unlike the Rose Garden celebration back in May when the House passed an Obamacare repeal, but the Senate couldn't follow suit, so it was kind of premature. Yesterday, Republicans enjoyed the passage of their tax bill by both chambers, and the president enjoyed the moment. It's been uh, an amazing experience, I have to tell you. Hasn't been done in 34 years, but actually really hasn't been done because we broke every record. It's the largest, I always say the most massive, but it's the largest tax cut in the history of our country and reform, but tax cut. Really something special. Hmm. So technically, that's not that, that's, accurate. That's actually a lie, but, I mean, Craig Shirley was talking about it yesterday. John Kennedy's was bigger in 64. Reagan's was bigger in 81. But it's what Donald Trump does. He lies. He can't just say, hey, we've passed the best tax, the, 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 the biggest tax cut since Ronald Reagan. He's got to lie. Again, yeah. taking something which would be a good day and, and just mucking it up. He's undeterred by the fact that that's not true. And by press, the, press by the fact that he lies over and over again yes. and lies without ceasing and even in high moments he can't just take the victory. He has to lie about the victory and, and sully it. So Casey Hunt, this obviously is a crowning achievement for Paul Ryan, for Mitch McConnell, something they've long sought. I mean, to Josh's point earlier, every time one of these stories came up, whether it was Charlottesville or a tweet about Kirsten Gillibrand or a tweet about Mika, we said, why won't you come out against the president? The answer always was these guys want tax reform. They want to stick by his side because they want tax reform. So they're going to hang in with them until they get tax reform. Well, they got it yesterday. What's the vibe? What's the mood on Capitol Hill this morning? They did get it yesterday, and I think part of why you saw what you saw yesterday, and I, I was right there with Joe in being kind of stunned to hear Pre Paul Ryan calling the president exquisite, exquisite presidential oh, leadership. I mean, God, this is not Paul. wrong with him. Go he must it, not be running. Home. He's Go just, back God. to Wisconsin. It's just painful. Save no. your dignity. Let's you have not. children. Go so ahead. <laughs> So now, when you say that to a man, will it become a screaming headline that you I attacked hope, a man? I hope it does. Because when I said that she about a woman, example. it was like I was attacking you, a woman, and it was unusual. You don't Curious call somebody how people think. who's a racist, who says what he said after Charlottesville, who tweets white supremacist videos out woman, of Great you Britain. You have children. Uh, from, have some grace. Inspired from a party that actually uh, inspired an assassin to kill a member of parliament. Those are not the people you call exquisite. But Go ahead, Casey. No. <laughs> yes, Casey. The point I was going to make simply is that this is Paul Ryan's crowning achievement. He's been working on it for decades. He's thrilled. The mood on Capitol Hill in the hallways among Republicans is one of jubilation, I would say, around this. But they've also learned a lot about how to manage this president. And they've learned that if you go out in public or you go on television and you say something negative, he's going to see it and it's going to come around and bite you if you try to go have you know, a private meeting with the president and you want to get something that done. Sounds and like an I, autocrat. I am I am struck by the de the degree to which it was obvious yesterday that they have absorbed this lesson and are acting. So, so Casey, let me wow. ask you this question because many people, losers. not many people, I think most people watching know exactly what we're talking about. That Donald Trump is trying to build a personality cult. Uh, have you ever seen, or have any of your colleagues ever seen, such a display of craven? Uh, uh, of, of cravenness of, of, of members of Congress who are duly elected and equal to the president in power uh, being so obsequious towards a president. Oh my God. I, I would just say I had felt like I had never seen anything like what happened yesterday as I was standing there watching it and he called them kind of one by one as, as somebody noted by their first name, uh, you know, which Susan. of course, I mean, as you as you guys know, having worked with him for a long time, he's demanded that in business as well. Everybody at the table calls him Mr. Trump. He uses uh, their first names now, of course, uh, he's Mr. President. I, I, I remember when President Obama was kind of at the height of his popularity and, and he swept into office in 2008 and there was just an incredible incredible degree of excitement around the fact that he uh, had been elected and Democrats at that time were certainly uh, kind of falling all over themselves to say positive things about the president, but that was because they wanted to be associated with him and they felt proud 
of where their party was and their accomplishments. Uh, and I just think that the opposite is true in private. And I'm, I was just so struck by the disparity between the general exhaustion and, and unpredictability of working with this administration. Uh, I do think this will give them some solace that, OK, maybe this was all worth it because the signature is on this bill. And, and they can also point to the judiciary and some other areas where things actually have dramatically changed in, in, in favor of conservatives. But right. I, it was it was a, a, a striking day. Well, and what is so striking, again, is if you look at what uh, what these members say behind closed doors, saying he is not mentally fit, saying that he is he's a horrific president, that he's got terrible leadership skills. Those are people who were on that stage yesterday. Those are the people on the yeah. stage. The very people on the stage that were saying those things are the ones who are quietly behind the scenes telling every reporter that will listen to them how embarrassed they are to be associated with him. Every one of them. They roll their eyes, they mock him, they're humiliated to be associated with that man. And then they go out and get behind a microphone and say that. Now let's, let's, uh, so uh, I think we've, John I think we've Josh, defined uh, uh, that, this problem. Uh, <laughs> personality of cult, an American autocrat in waiting. I hope Americans are aware of that. Now let's talk about what this means for the Republican Party. And now, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to do a complete 180. Okay. You now have a Republican Party that, instead of saying we were not able to accomplish anything of significance, can now say, if I'm a Republican, I'm going, out on a, I'm going home for the Christmas break, holiday break, and if I hold town hall meetings, I'll say, listen, it's been a rocky ride. Yep. Look what we did. We, we, we got Neil Gorsuch in the Supreme Court. Uh, the federal judiciary, uh, liberals complain about it every day, how conservative it's getting. We passed the largest tax cut since the early 1980s. Uh, corporate tax rates for the first time in a generation are competitive with other countries across the globe. Regulations have been cut in record rates. The economy's humming along faster than it's ever hummed along before. Uh, 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 if, uh, as far as consumer confidence goes, the recent poll shows more Americans think the economy is doing better than in any poll that's that's been taken before. Stock markets are hitting all-time high. That means a lot for the college your child goes to. That means a lot for the company you work for. That means a lot for your 401k. Yes, we have some problems with this president, but we Republicans have stood and delivered. And the individual mandate is gone oh, as a part and, of this tax bill. And the individual mandate is gone. So if you're Republicans, and you deliver that message, what's the democratic response? Um, well, I mean, <laughs> so many things to say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, certainly you focus on the tax bill, and I think that's where we just, given the nature of the day, we should focus on. You know, it's, it's, people have co been commenting for weeks about how unpopular the bill is, and, 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 and it's going to be the centerpiece of, of Republicans, what they're going to boast about on the, when they go home, and what Democrats are going to attack Republicans over. They're going to look at this piece of legislation, which is unpopular for good reasons. Right. It is a, a bill that, that largely favors the uh, rich people and corporations. But, but if you're, 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 asking, you're asking what the Democrats are I know, but, is. but if you're a working class American, this yeah. is where I think the Democrats are missing it. And you get a $600 tax cut, yeah. you don't really care that uh, uh, corporate guys are getting a $20,000 tax cut. You're looking at the $600 tax cut that you, you might really be. need. Might, maybe. Well, maybe. I, I'd say, may, well, maybe they are, but maybe. I... I mean, as all, the only data we have right now is that the bill's incredibly unpopular. I, right, and it should be unpopular, and I still think it's a horrible bill. I'm, I'm just simply saying, though, if your people vote their self-interest, yeah. and it's just like when Bernie runs around saying, you can have free college, and you can have free health care, and you can have a free car, and we're going to give you a free cruise to Alaska! Everybody says, oh, wow, I like that plan. Yeah. Well, if somebody's getting $600 more in their check, uh, paycheck, they're going to think, I, I, I like this. Yeah. Well, maybe. Uh, again, uh, that the, we'll see whether that's true. Or they're true. going to be very upset that they're paying $650 more in health insurance because the premiums are going to go up as a result of right. having that. When so will that hit? That, and that hits, the timing of that is much different because they're going to see those paychecks coming in and they're going to feel really good until around October and November when they get their notification right before election time. Yeah, Josh, so, so, so Josh, uh, how, what's the Democratic response to they're what Republicans are 
we're sure well, to say. I, 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 Mika's right about this. We, we experimented with this in 2009 that what economists said when we were passing the Recovery Act, that the most efficient and effective way to stimulate the economy was to give people a small increase in their paychecks every two weeks. And so what we do is we actually cut the payroll tax. Mm -hmm. uh, and it had a, had a small impact in terms of the political conception of the assistance that people were receiving from the federal government. It had a, an important benefit for the broader economy. So it ended up being good for the economy, but not very good for political argument. I think Republicans may see the same thing, which is uh, with, the, with one added benefit, which is the reason the Republicans did this is, is has less to do with individual tax rates than it does with the corporate tax rates. Oh, sure. Rates. It's all, it's all were, about their donors. It, it's all about uh, their donors. Hundred, by, by the way, and there's a hundred percent by talking to donors and talking to Republicans, if anybody goes out there and says that they pushed this and voted for this for any reason other than to keep their, their donors calm, they're not telling the yeah, truth. It's not, it's not even a serious proposition that that's what they were doing. But I, I think the point, Joe, is that the, the challenge for Republicans is that they do have a gap between their donor class who fund their campaigns, who are salivating at the prospect of a significant corporate tax cut, and the people who are at their base who are wondering, why are people in Washington, D.C. looking out for me? You asked about Democrats, though. You're right. This is, a good, this is going to be a good thing politically for Republicans because they took a huge toll over the course of this year, and it showed up in Virginia and in Alabama, because Republicans, despite having control of government, had not done anything. And that did s serve to suppress turnout in those important elections. Now you will have Republicans being able to go back to their homes and saying, into their districts and saying, you may not like it, but this is what we got done. This is what we promised, and this is what we got done. That is going to help them politically, and that is something that Democrats are going to have to grapple with.